10 years ago, I started my fitness journey. I went from looking like this to this, gaining 10 kilograms of lean muscle mass in the first two years of lifting, lifted weight and performed acrobatic maneuvers in the air that I never thought would have been possible for myself and developed healthy habits that I believe have changed my life forever. And I'm going to be honest, it was hard at points, but the hardest part was starting. Hi. For those of you who are new here, welcome. My name is Matty. And in this video, I will be sharing with you some steps that you can follow to start your fitness journey, as well as give you some tips that I wish I had been given when I first started. So without further ado, let's get on with the video. The first step is to find an activity that you like, that you actually like. Before I discovered strength training, before I discovered lifting at the gym, I thought that to get fit, you had to run. I thought that running was the way that you lost fat, lost weight and got abs. And it does, but there was one problem. I hated running and I still do. The monotony of maintaining a steady pace for miles and miles on end in a moderate state of pain slash discomfort just didn't really sound that appealing to me. And maybe it doesn't for you either. Starting running would have been a great way for me to fail pretty much at the first hurdle. I would have been fighting an uphill battle simply because I really don't enjoy running. But thankfully, there are many different ways to get fit. There are many different ways to start your fitness journey and to be doing things that you actually enjoy. Instead, I found another way to get fit. I started kickboxing. And who doesn't like to hit and kick things? Kickboxing got me physically very, very fit. And I lost a lot of weight. I went from 84 kilograms of being kind of skinny fat to 77 kilograms of being quite lean. Later I discovered weight training and I really loved the way that it made my body feel. And aside from the numerous internal health benefits and leveling up my physique, being able to set yourself some tangible objective goals, for example, aiming to increase my squat on my bench, was really quite attractive and quite appealing to me. So find an activity that you enjoy and stick to it over a long period of time. Step number two is to educate yourself. When you go to the gym, go and ask people who are more experienced than you about how to do this specific exercise or what exercises they do. Watch your video tutorials. Just have a hunger for knowledge and a desire to grow. Everyone was a fitness newbie once. Don't be afraid of asking people for help. In fact, I've actually met quite a lot of new people and made quite a few of my friends through going to the gym. You'd be surprised, people are generally willing to help. And I can't tell you how many gymnastic, kickboxing and lifting tutorials I have watched over the years. Especially when I was first starting out, it was almost an obsession. Watching videos and tutorials, like the one you're watching right now, of course, can educate you on proper technique and give you tips on how to perform exercises more efficiently. And the beauty of it is that you can actually learn from other people's mistakes. You don't have to make them yourself because I made so many mistakes when I first started my fitness journey. And I definitely don't want you to make the same mistakes I did. That's kind of one of the reasons why I started this YouTube channel. Step number three is to have a pre-workout ritual because there are gonna be days when you just don't feel like working out. There's so many other things you'd rather be doing. You've had a tough day at work, you're feeling tired, you're sleep deprived, you've not really eaten that much and you just feel a bit under the weather. But on those days, I found that by adopting this pre-workout ritual or routine, it still manages to get me in the right mindset to go and have an amazing workout, to go and crush it at the gym. And even if I don't have an amazing workout, at least I managed to go to the gym and do the workout. I like to do some shorter prehab, rehab exercises before an upper body workout that involve using bands, doing body weight, push-ups and press-ups with rotations and shoulder taps. This is a great way to kind of warm up and I make sure that I sip plenty of water before I start my workout. And something that I've tried recently, which has really helped, is listening to motivational content that gets me really fired up before a workout. So listening to David Goggins, Coach Payne, Marcus Jones, all that stuff really helps. Step number four is to follow a program. When you first start lifting, you can kind of do whatever you want and you will make progress because newbie gains. But it can feel quite daunting if you're wandering around the gym and you just have no idea what you're doing. It is nice to go into the gym with a plan to know exactly what you're supposed to do. Be in and then out and then home so you can relax for the rest of the evening. So if you're like me and you like having structure in your life, then why should the gym be any different? Why not have a workout program to follow? 
Additionally, by following a workout program in your first year of training, you can actually optimize and maximize gains. There are several free beginner programs that I can link in the description below. Quite a lot of them are for free, and the ones that I would recommend are Starting Strength 5x5, Wenler 531 if you're more into sort of powerlifting strength training. And if you want a workout program that allows you to train twice a week, this minimalistic exercise program that has already helped quite a few people that I know quite a few male models that I know get into shape and maintain their shape and build that aesthetic body. Then I'll leave a link in the description below for a workout ebook that I put together. It's on Etsy, so go and check it out if you're interested. Step number five, what to eat. When I first started my fitness journey, I thought it was all about low carb, which sucked. And then after low carb, I thought it was all about clean eating, chicken, rice, broccoli, and that actually led to me binge eating and giving me an eating disorder. What I've realized is that life is too short and food is too good to restrict your diet. For long-term sustainability with fitness and nutrition, I found that not having a specific diet works best. Instead, I try and mostly eat healthy food, so lean proteins, healthy fats, whole grain carbohydrates, lots of fruits and vegetables, minimizing all those processed sugars and refined carbohydrates. This is 70 to 80% of the time. The rest of the time, I allow myself to eat what I want to eat. If I have cravings for things, for dessert, for junk food, Five Guys McDonald's, pizza, cake, ice cream, then I'll have it with no regrets. Step number six is to not compare yourself to other people. Everyone is different. Everyone is built different. And the best way that I can kind of explain this point, this step, is to give you a story of when I first started lifting with my friend, we both went to the gym, we both started at the same time, and his bench press absolutely catapulted, and he was benching virtually almost twice what I was benching in the first one to two years. And he didn't even follow a program that efficiently. He would just rock up to the gym and keep adding weight every week. Do I think there's a genetic element to that? Absolutely. The guy was built like a tank, he had short arms, and outweighed me by about 15 to 20 kilograms. So he was built to bench press, but because of the way that I was built with longer arms, especially longer forearms, I was more of a deadlifter. And as a result, my deadlift was bigger than his, even though he outweighed me by about 15 kilograms. So the whole point of this is everyone is a little bit different. Everyone's built a little bit differently. There are gonna be things that you're better at, and there are gonna be things that other people are better at. Step number seven, and arguably the most important one is to change your mindset. If you're just going to the gym to get girls or to, to look better, to try and get six pack abs for like vanity reasons, then the chances are you're not gonna be going to the gym that long. It's not gonna be that sustainable. That being said, a lot of people do start the gym to, to look better, but then they end up realizing that it makes them feel better and it changes their way of life and their whole kind of mindset changes towards the gym which enables them to be able to go to the gym long term if you're in this for the long game for the long term then this is exactly the mindset that you want you want to think about the gym as a long-term investment by doing it for your health putting in time training sessions consistently avoiding injury not doing anything crazy over the long term it's going to get you in fantastic shape it's going to get you strong and healthy but also it's going to keep you healthy it's gonna keep you looking well. A lot of studies have shown that by strength training, you actually reverse aging, you maintain your muscle mass, which starts to decline after the age of 35, and you also maintain your bone mass. Now, as someone who's worked with a lot of old people in their physiotherapy practice, trust me when I say that strength training will keep you able-bodied well into your later years. Anyway, I hope that you found this video useful. If you followed these tips, then you probably know where to start for your fitness journey. If you want more tips or more videos on kind of these topics and my channel is full of them, feel free to go check them out and let me know down below what your favorite tip was. Until next time, guys. I'm on my own, broken along. I feel the rain crashing down. All around this empty town, I'm searching for the lost and found.